Hi, my name is Toy Newing. I lead the cable segment inside of Intel's Networking and Edge Solutions Group. I'm joined today by Brady Volt, founder of Volt Firm and NimbleThis. Brady is a doxus and cable networking expert whom I followed for years. I asked Brady to join us in this video Q&A today as he has many years of experience running CMTSs and operating DOCSIS networks. Most recently in the past couple of years, Brady has deployed and operated virtual CMTS technology. Hi Brady. Hi Twee, and thanks for the intro. As Twee mentioned, I spent the last 30 years in the cable industry playing with lots of fun toys and fixing lots of intriguing problems. DOCSIS CMTSs have been a fun part of the journey. And the virtualization of DOCSIS CMTSs just adds more fun. So I'm really excited about discussing related technologies. Let's get started. Brady, we've heard Elad Nafshi from Comcast say that they've reduced 20 legacy CMTS racks into a single virtual CMTS rack. Can you help me and the audience understand how it's possible to reduce 20 racks into a single rack? Twee. That is a great success story of how the virtualization of CMTSs can dramatically reduce head-end size requirements, powering, and HVAC costs. Now, while I don't know the specifics of the Comcast system you are discussing, I can walk through some of the typical components that would be removed when migrating from a legacy CMTS deployment to a vCMTS deployment. If you look at the diagram on the screen, many people are not aware of the massive amount of head-end combining and splitting required to move data from uh, the head-end to the fiber node. And this costs lots of rack space and human time to install and maintain these massive combining networks. Further, you have forward, and return bath path optics that consume a lot of rack space and power. Finally, many cable operators have return path monitoring systems which also take up rack space, power, and HVAC. It all adds up. So when you move to a VCMTS, this all goes away. You basically have a fiber from the VCMTS that goes to the RPD. There's a little bit more, but that's pretty much it. Brady, so with so much reduction in racks in the head end, one would assume that there's a significant power savings as well. How much power can be saved when switching from legacy CMTSs to virtual CMTS? And where does the power savings come from? Tweet, power consumption is something that is on everyone's mind likely more so today than at any time in our recent history. VCMTSs definitely do offer a significant power savings. Comparisons are challenging because there's just so many variables, such as head-end optics, fiber nodes, and more. As you know, for our SETE Cable Tech Expo paper, we did our best to normalize server and switch power consumption. This was our baseline. As shown in the image, our findings were that VCMTSs consume two to three times less power than legacy CMTSs while delivering up to nine times more data per watt. Again, your mileage may vary depending on your exact configuration, but the bottom line is that you will see a power savings using VCMTSs which is something we're all trying to achieve in many aspects of both our business <clears throat> lives and our personal lives. At the SCTE show in Philadelphia last year in September, we heard quite a bit about streaming telemetry and how the real-time data can help cable operators manage their networks proactively. What is streaming telemetry? And can operators run streaming telemetry on their existing CMTSs, Brady? Yes. Streaming telemetry is very exciting to see, but let's start with what most everyone is familiar with, which is Simple Network Management Protocol, or SNMP. SNMP has been around 
since the 1980s and has been a staple of how we get data from network devices. We have had to use SNMP sparingly due to the inherent limitations of compute resources on legacy CMTSs, which means we have longer polling intervals and bigger blind spots in our monitoring data than what we'd like to have. The issue is that the compute required to pull a CMTS and have the CMTS respond to SNMP queries for getting that monitoring data, well, that compute is the same shared compute that the CMTS needs to pass our subscriber data. That's important to us. VCMTSs, on the other hand, they have dedicated compute uh, in the form of dedicated CPU cores to process that monitoring data in real time. VCMTS vendors are giving us a wealth of streaming telemetry because of this. In streaming telemetry, the monitoring data we get is more of like a continuous nature flowing from the, the devices that we want to monitor. This is a native technology in VCMTSs, and it enables us to obtain richer troubleshooting data at a time when we need it most to enable us to support and monitor our 10G networks. Brady, I've not worked on a CMTS in quite a while, and I still may remember some of the UBR commands that I used to use in the command line interface. Is it a big jump for an MSO's engineers to switch from command line interface to a web GUI to troubleshoot and administer the DOCSIS networks? Twee, I still work on both legacy and VCMTSs. My experience is that on the VCMTSs, you have the luxury of both the legacy CLI command line and the new streaming telemetry GUI interfaces for debugging. Let's start off with the streaming telemetry interfaces as shown on the current screenshots. These illustrate the level of detail that we now get from a VCMTS. Contrast this with a show cable command, show cable modem command on the CLI. We'll see this in a moment. GUIs almost always provide a higher clarity of data along with a concise history. Now let's move on to the CLI. In a legacy CMTS, here's what we expect for the CLI. Instant details on the current state of all modems for the show cable modem command, the show cable modem phi command. We see nearly identical information using the identical commands on both the VCMTS and the legacy CMTS. As a DOCSIS engineer, this is the way it should be, at least from my perspective. I like having the fallback of the CLI because I'm com comfortable with CLI configuration and troubleshooting when I'm using either a VCMTS or a legacy CMTS. It's the best of both worlds. Brady, we know that Kubernetes and containers are foundational software building blocks for the virtual CMTS platform. So how well does an MSO's engineers who operate the virtual CMTS need to understand Kubernetes and containers? Twee, I'm really glad you asked this question. When I first heard about VCMTSs, there was a lot of talk and discussion of the underlying technology and how cool it was, such as containers and Kubernetes and all the underlying underpinnings. It can sound very intimidating, however. What I found out was that a CMTS is really just a CMTS, whether it's a legacy CMTS or a virtual CMTS, when you're looking at it from the end user. I'm currently working with a tier two cable operator who is migrating from legacy CMTSs to virtual CMTSs. The virtual CMTS vendor is assisting in the deployment, which is pretty common. One thing I found is that the deployment is very similar to a legacy CMTS deployment. The cable operator is working through some of the very same issues as legacy CMTS deployments, except there is no head-end legacy RF cabling, also no 
head-end optics. This is being replaced by IP switches and confirming that the fiber to the RFI nodes meets digital timing requirements versus analog optical link requirements. That's the most significant change. Moving from analog fiber to digital fiber. And for most, that's a good change. But along this journey, I can assure you that the words container and Kubernetes have never been mentioned one time, nor does it need to be mentioned. Brady, thanks so much for joining me in this video Q&A today and letting our audience learn from you about transforming legacy CMTS networks to virtual CMTS networks. We really appreciate you sharing with us your hands-on experience of helping the MSOs transform their networks for the future. Yes, Twee, thank you. I, I also enjoyed the conversation. You know I like talking about Doxis. I think we covered some interesting material today, and I definitely hope everyone watching got something out of it. So until next time, you take care, and everyone watching, take care. Talk See to you ya. soon, my friend. Thank you.